computer. Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome back to our weekly share in uh, Hasidus. This year, this week, we'll be looking at, I got inspired by Yud Shvat. I've been going to a lot of Fabrengans. So um, I decided um, that we would look uh, this week in place of the mimer of the altar Rebbe into the mimer of the Rebbe and the Fridika Rebbe, previous Rebbe. So I posted a picture like this, a picture, a picture of the cover of the Book of Maimarim. Um, and as you can see, this is, these were, what's the story behind it? The, uh, the previous Rebbe came to America, um, I believe in 1940. And he, um, over time, he was, he was saying Hasidus. But then he began to lose his speech and he had been um, uh, suffered greatly physically in under the communist regime uh, and came into the United States in a wheelchair actually from a boat um, and had been tortured and, and uh, humiliated and had gone through a lot of suffering. Um, but Baruch Hashem, um, he came, he arrived in the United States and had 10 amazing years where he, um, we know his, his famous statement when he got off the boat was, and, and the background is people thought, and, and that's including my own, my own family, uh, came from Poland and Romania. Uh, you know, the Russian border, what have you. And they came in the turn of the century, 1900. And, and they brought their, their parents. And my grandparents, great-grandparents are buried in Los Angeles. And um, they, I don't know if it was a choice even for them. It was like, you know, you're going to this foreign land and you have to do what you have to do. You have to work on on, Sh on, on Shabbos, on the Sabbath, you have to work, survival. And um, they weren't educated, the education, it was a very difficult time to educate and come to a new world, to the shores of America. And the Friedrich Rebbe, when he arrived, he said, America is Nishtandersh, that, you know, you might think that this is a new world. And people even thought that the, the streets of America were lined in gold. You know, that it was a land of opportunity. And, and in fact, many Americans, many Jews settled and thrived uh, in many ways. But they kind of left behind their Jewish roots. And, and that I, I myself was the second generation born in Los Angeles. And uh, by the time I came along, I found I wasn't even getting any traditional ideas or customs or, you know, it had been reduced to uh, bagels and lox, <laughs> right? And canela in your chicken soup. That was your Jewish observance. So um, everything else was just kind of superficial uh, traditions, and it, it wasn't much different than, say, my my Mexican neighbor who lived. You know, he had customs from Mexico or uh, Italians or Irish or whoever they were. Um, they Chinese, Japanese. They they received from their past, but now they were American. So Friedrich Rebbe, he mamish started a revolution <laughs> in the sense, a renaissance that he, he came to the United States and, and rebuilt Judaism um, and began the building of 
synagogues and yeshivot and uh, day schools and Jewish education and inspiring the children and mikvahs, you know, ritual uh, bathhouses, um, everything, kosher foods, uh, slaughtering kosher meat, um, all aspects of Jewish life, traditional uh, Jewish life. So Baruch Hashem, um, so he had 10 years where he accomplished so much um, from 1940 to 1950. And in 1950, um, let me just listen to that number. Sometimes I think it's someone who wants to, to join the class. <laughs> just see. Um, anyways, so, so the previous Rebbe in 19, so by the end of those 10 years, that decade, he had begun, he had lost his speech, um, and he couldn't continue to give over the teachings. So what he did was he wrote out, uh, the Maimorim, the, the Hasidic teachings that he intended to be studied uh every week and uh prepared the the people to connect to him um and so it was on that uh, Shabbos of in 1950 um Yud Shvat the 10th of Shvat that um he had prepared this mimer and passed away on that very day so it was clear that that was that was in a sense his his testament his will and testament his his tzavaa, his that he left us um, to study and it was like the culmination of his teachings. So um, so we'd like to look at that mimer. Um, it. Is very comprehensive. We'll we'll only be doing a part of it. Um, before this, before his passing, um, he did. It was originally said um, in in nineteen. Let's see. It was originally said in nineteen twenty three. And so, um, which is very interesting. It's tough fresh pay gimel, 1923. And now we're tough shin pay gimel. Very amazing. <laughs> it's like a hundred years. Yeah. So it was originally said, and then um, he took it and redid it. He divided it into chapters and added short summaries of each chapter and very, the beginnings and explanations of concepts um, and application. Um, and in fact, Basi Lagani, the words Basi Lagani, that's, the, that's what we call the mimer, Basi. Let me see if someone's connecting here. Okay, and in, in Hebrew, it comes from the Song of Songs, ba, ba, Bati, Basi, Le, Gani. Um, Yehudas, we can only see the blank part of the white screen. Uh, there you go. But then we can't see you so much, but okay. Um, right. Yeah, maybe move it over a little. There must be some uh, way of writing on, on a computer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um we have a white screen. There's a white screen for um um for Zoom. Interesting. Um who can I wonder share? if that might be an improvement. Okay, share if we go to share screen. We don't have to do it now, but maybe for next time. Okay. 
that would be interesting to try where we could somehow I mean even on my computer right now it's just really I'm just looking at half a screen whatever yeah, so if you see this oh that's good so you can um yeah let me close this all right so so yeah you can You okay. can do that and then you can save it. Oh, how how are you pen. drawing? How are you drawing that with this this pencil? It's, it's just a pen. Um, when you do the share screen. Oh, do I use? I, I could use a mouse with a mouse. Yeah, you, I'm just using my finger. Oh, so I have a mouse here. Yeah. So wait a minute. Let me give you remote. Allow. Uh, then you have to, so you have to, uh, if you want to write letters. Oh, for, for letters? Um, like big letters or something? Uh, like that's. So you go over to the whiteboard. If you click on whiteboard, then you can do text. You can do draw. See how? See how draw is. You can do lines, you can do shapes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I don't see. Yeah, there you go. You got it. Right. That's just with my mouse. It's mm -hmm. like blade. It's interesting. Right. I and mean, then you can go up and do clear or undo. All right, right now everything is has disappeared here view options. Anyways, or right, maybe I should practice during the week or something. Yeah, go into, go into zoom and practice using the whiteboard. And um, you can draw and you can type you can type in Hebrew if you switch over on your computer to the Hebrew typewriter. Okay. Okay. okay so, so let's go back with this i'll stop the share and yeah okay so basi lagani is from the song of songs and the, the pasuk is that i came to my garden my sister ahosi kala brought my bride and the Rebbe, the Prophetic Rebbe uses this as a theme. The, the theme is that the Shekhinah, the divine presence, is like the, or say God's essence, right? Is, can, he came to his garden and then he explains, my garden is my bridal chamber. I came to my bride, my sister, my bride, and that's the Jewish people, you know? And, uh, so he came to this world to marry us and to unite with us. And we're gonna, so now we'll go into the mimer and see what, how he explains this. Just a couple more points. Um, so there's, um, the first mimer was like a hemshech, an extended mimer of four continuous mimorim. Two of them, and this is what I printed here, that two of them were um, originally said on Parsha's bow, and the first part, and that's what I printed here. And I, I showed you, I circled the name Rivka because, the next page, because you can see here, that when he wrote this, it says, it says at the top, Shabbos Parshas Bo Yud Shvat 57, 10, 1950. Your sight, Kvod, Imo, Ziknaso, Harabanis, Atzidkanis, Maris Rivka, Nishmata, Eden. Zichrona, 
So he's saying that this day that he said this mimer, and, and, and he didn't say it because he passed away on that day, was the very yard site of his grandmother Rivka. His grandmother, his righteous grandmother Rivka. Uh, by the way, my first child is Rivka, and I named her after Rabbits and Rivka. And I, I remember when I named her, my, my parents were like, Rivka? We don't have any relatives, Rivka. You know, it was like, they just, you know, it was. It's funny, I said, no, I read about this woman and she was extremely, I, I just was inspired. I felt I was very honored to have a child and name her in memory of her. And that she she was like the, the, uh, uh, the queen of Lubavitch, you know, in a certain sense. She was the, I don't know if that's the proper word. She was the wife of the Rebbe Maharash. And she was royalty. Yes. But I mean, so were all the Rebbitsons royalty, but she... Um, she was the one who gave over. She was very uh, uh, expressive and she shared the legacy of Chabad, of all the, like the altar Hasidim and what it was like, you know, the altar Rebbe and the Mithla Rebbe and the Tzemach Tzedek and all of their the Hasidim and told it over in particular to her grandson, the Rebbe, Rebbe Yosef Yitzchak. Right, and he was... The oral tradition that we read in, in yes. the Friedrich Rebbe's memoirs is all from the Rebbe's and Rivka. Yes, she trans transmitted the Masora in a very real sense. And my teacher of Laser Nanis uh, was in Lubavitch and he saw her and he lived, you know, in the environment where she was. Um, he saw her? But, yeah. Wow. And Rabbi what? I mean, his grandfather was the Choyzer of the Tzamech Tzedek. He was one of the people who gave, who listened to the Maimarim of the Tzamech Tzedek and, uh, and then wrote it out wow. after hearing it. So he wow. was, yes, he was very rooted wow. in, in Lubavitch. So, wow. so this is Rabbits and Rivka. And then the second half, of the mimer, or the, the next part is the next page. Okay. Right. Yeah. Which is several pages later. And we, we won't study this next section because it's too much for today. But the next section, um, right? So he writes on that. So it's another day. That was Yud Shvat. So this was Yud Gimel Shvat, the 13th of Shvat of that year, the yard site, Kvod Imo. The other one said Kvod Ziknato, his grandmother. And this one says the yard site of his, the honor of his mother, his honorable mother, the Rebetzin, Atzidkonis, the righteous, Maris Shterna Sora. Nishmata Eden, Zichrona Yagen Aleinu. So, this is dedicated to his mother. And I, it's very interesting because she, um, she lived in, or she, there's a mimer called Bikur Chicago. That's the name of the mimer. And she actually was staying in Chicago. Um, I'm trying to, to think historically if she, maybe she, maybe she passed away when she was in Chicago. That was around it, 1929 before the Friedrich Rabbe visited Hebron. So maybe, or maybe when he passed away, she was in Chicago. I don't know exactly. I'd have to look it up. But the reason I rem I'm particularly aware of this is because I today, uh, we merit to have a daughter named Sterna Sora. And she lives in Chicago right now. <laughs> That's funny. It's amazing that the previous Rebbitz, that, that Rebbitzin 
Previous Rebbe's mother was in Chicago, Davka. So, Shtena Sari is also your daughter? Yes, my third daughter. Wow, you gave all the Rebbe's uh, names. Yes? Flora uh, Hayamushka, who was named after the Tzemach Tzedek's ah. wife. Because the Rebbe's in Shterna, the Rebbe's in Hayamushka was alive at that time. So we didn't wow, name Wow, that's incredible. And, and there's about, I don't know, a five-year difference or something, something like that. So everyone always said that she could lie about her age because <laughs> when they say, when she says her name is Chaimushka, everyone assumes that she, you know, was born after 1988, you know, and she was born 1983. So anyway. Five so, years, five years are different. Yeah. Younger. So, then my fourth, or then Shterna Sora, then Manucha Rachel is our fourth daughter. Wow. Yes, and then our sons are Yosef Yitzchak, Schneer Zalman, Shalom Dober. And then the next son was when my father passed away. I was pregnant when my father passed away. So we named him Mayor. We named him Eliezer Mayer, and so I, I added the name of my rabbi, Rav Nanis, Eliezer Nanis, with my father's name. So I felt that was a schus for all of us to have them together. And then the, the next son was uh, Shmuel, after the Rebbe Maharash. Wonderful. These Haley yeah. Yes. So, so. And, and it's not related, is it related with birth? Uh, let's say, because uh, it was in the date of the Yom Hilula. No, not related, yes? Yes, no, Would I you... did look. I, well, there were always different reasons, but if it was once the Schneer Zalman was in the, in the Hayom Yom when he was born. And yeah. right, and uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I have quite a story with my Yosef Yitzchak because he was well, he was born Hey Shvat, so it's very close to Yud Shvat. Yes, yes. But in addition, I had had a son before that, Abdel Elif Abdel, is a baby named Menachem Mendel that we lost. He he was, uh, it was, they said it was crib death, right? So. But so you that, had a name already for him? Yes. He was yeah. born. He was, he was a normal. My father-in-law was Menachem Mendel. And that baby was born. And then his bris was put off. And then my father-in-law passed away right then. So the baby was um, like skating, and we gave the name right after the Shiva, straight. The, the, and the exact name, Menachem Mendel ben Moshe Yaakov, just like the Zaydi. His, his father was Menachem Mendel, and my husband is Menachem Mendel. Uh, Meshi Yankov. But you did not do the bris. Yes, he had a bris. I, ah. even, had a, I even have a letter from the Rebbe in the Rebbe's hand handwriting that the Rebbe heard that he was born and that he was entered into the bris of uh, Avram Avinu and that his name is Menachem Mendel and the Rebbe signed the letter. And, so I, and he, but he's not, uh, not anymore with you? He passed away. Yeah. Uh, he lived 100 days exactly. And uh, when, like, Rav Yitzchak Ginsburg, all, all the rabbis, I mean, also my Rav Nanis, my teacher came. First of all, my teacher told me when I called him crying that my father-in-law passed away and I was, I was in the Beit Lama, the home for women after birth with their babies. And I said, my, you know, Chamin Iftar, you know, my father-in-law suddenly passed away. And he said very calmly, Kanereh, who Tsarich Likabel at Shema Saba. 
Like, how did he know? You know, he knew that that baby needed to receive the, the Zaidi's name because the baby, the father-in-law, my father-in-law heard that his son had a son, his first son, and then he left, his neshama left. So, it, it, so he, I heard, had, he, heard that, uh, he heard that you had a uh, baby? Yes, yes. He, it was in the same uh, date? Same no, day? no, it was, it was like, uh, it was like two weeks later, he passed away. Wow. The baby did not have a name yet. Had the baby had the bris on time, he would have been given another name. Wow. Yes. And, uh, and uh, so Rav Nana said, and the name, the whole, like, the whole surrounding feeling and understanding, you know, not that we know, but was that he, he was a, uh, uh, he assisted my father-in-law somehow. He helped him. He came, his soul came to finish something. And so Rav Nanis told me when he, you know, after the passing of the baby, he said, he said, Kanere, he told me a story from the Gemara with Rebbe Mayer, how Rebbe Mayer lost two sons. And uh, his wife, yeah. Maria. Very, very sad story. Right, so and his she, wife, she's so brave. I cannot understand that. How can right. she be so brave? Crazy. Right. Yeah. But she gave the muscle that it's like a, a, a socher, a salesperson who goes to the shuk. So two of them go, and one goes early, goes to the shuk, finishes all his wares, makes a profit, and comes home early the other one you know wakes up late uh stumbles his uh, horse dies his uh you know the wheel falls off his carriage until he gets there it's almost uh sunset and he hardly even sells any produce and uh comes home with minimal profit so so he she she asked her husband which one was really more successful in his task. So it was clear that it was the first, the first sales salesman, the socher. So from that, Rabbi Meir understood that the children were like that first successful seller that uh, came early, did his work, and left. Was finished. So that's what I received. And I, Baruch Hashem, I had my, I had Rev. Laser Nanis giving me, you know, supporting me and, and loving family. And uh, so what I wanted to say in terms of names is that, so we didn't name Menachem Mendel again, because we felt like that was, you know, <laughs> we finished that tikkun. Although Baruch Hashem, I have many grandsons named Menach Bendel today. Um, so, uh, so wow. when when that, when my when that son was born, Yibadel Chaim Taimer Ruch So, it there was it was very clear that I would give him the name Yosef Yitzchak, because Yosef means Rachel gave her son the name Yosef. Hashem Yosef Hashem Li Ben Acher. The Lord will add for me another son. So when I gave that name, I mean, it was in, in that shul on that day, there was not a dry eye. <laughs> and, uh, and then Yitzchak is, he will laugh. It's the laughter of the, the final goal of the, the end of days. So so that's how we choose chose Yosef Yitzchak, uh, uh -huh. in addition to the connection to Heishvat, to Yudshvat. Wow. So, and Baruch Hashem, uh, my children are all lamplighters. They're the Rebbe's lamplighters. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. Like their parents. 
Well, I, I see it as our children are the Rebbe's children. It's not, you know, definitely they're not the souls. Yeah. yeah, he sent them to us. A hundred percent. I know. <laughs> it's it's mind blowing, really. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So, Baruch Hashem. So, let's get back. So the so by the way, the point I want to make. Here with the names of the grandmother and mother of Friedrich Rebbe is that he's he's Meramez here about the role of women because he could and this is this is his main this last memory left with us and everything. Let me just see if there's some if someone who wants to join. Who is this? Hello. 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 Okay. Um, so it's clear that the Friedrich Rebbe is, and the Rebbe and you, with this mimer is showing us the importance of women because it could have chosen any other date. Connected to the Balshemtov or any 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 you know in Davka you you know Yud Shvat Yud Gimel Shvat, and that he put the names here. Not every mimer has a dedication like this, and it said Davka on their yard sites. And the Rebbe has mentioned this that it shows us the central role of women in our generation, and their merit in this generation. So. And that the, he died in the day that exactly. his grandmother that gave that gave him all the support, all the memoirs, and he has yeah, it's incredible. Yes. Also, kind of representation of a, you no know, continuation. Yes. So exactly, and what the Rebbe did was on. So that was 1990. Excuse me, 1950. 1951, the Rebbe became Rebbe, and, and he began with his first mimer, which, which was this mimer. And again, he could have, this also says so much that he was Mamshich, but the previous Rebbe left. So for 20 years, he would take one chapter and explain and expound on Yudshvat of that year, that one chapter. And then for 20 years, that means 1951 to 1970 was the first uh, set, right? And then 1971 to 1990, and then 1991, to uh, 2010, and then 2011. So now we're continuing, right? In, in fact, we continue to study uh, that particular mimer that was said in that year that corresponds to our year in the cycle. So this goes to 230. So, so this year, in other, in other words, so this year is 19, excuse me, 2023. So 2023 then is, uh, is like 13, it's like Peric 13. That's what corresponds to this year. You know what the words of the Rebbe said about that parak, and then and then that parak is a reflection of that particular year too. So, but what I decided to do, I basically because I had this printed in my house, <laughs> and uh, it was accessible by Shkocha Pratis. So I thought we would just kind of go through the first section and take out all of the. Uh, central points. 
because this again this is like a it's like a guidebook this is a guidebook for the rebbe's message to us okay so let's look at the first page page 111 There we go. Okay, so yeah, this is it. This is it. Yeah, one eleven. Yeah. Okay. By the way, Gan Gan is Gematria fifty three. And then we know there are 53 chapters of Tanya, the first section of Tanya. Um, Not 54, no? No, 53. Uh, and Bichlau, so that's Gan equals 53. And 53 is, is 52 plus one. So what is 52? 52 is shame, shame ban. Shame ban, right? Of the various, the name of the ways of spelling God's name, Yudkevav, okay? Shame ban is bet nun which is like nun bet, which is 52. And any time in, when you're looking at numerical values, so it's called the thing, the koelel, one plus the koelel, meaning 52 plus one, plus the word itself equals, um, is, is, uh, is gone like the Basi Lagani. And what is, what is Shemban? Shemban is Malchus, is the lowest sphera, is like represents coming down into the world. So Basi Lagani, I came to my garden, to Gan Eden, I created the world. Achoy Sikala, my sister, bride. The Isabe Madrish Rabba Mukaimai, Lagan Ain Ksiv Khan, Elalagani. Doesn't say I came to a gun. It says I came to my gun. Why my gun? Lignuni, to my bridal chamber. Meaning it wasn't just, you know, coming to enjoy a beautiful garden. It was a marriage, a unification in this world of God and the world. To the place that my main part, the main part of me was in the beginning. Meaning this was the initial idea to make a world and to have the Shrina come down to the world. That the main indwelling of the divine presence was to be in was in the lower worlds okay but, but what happened but because of this sin of the tree of knowledge the divine presence was pushed away was was rose up from the earth to the first realm of the firmament. There's different levels of in the heavens. And then there were other generations and other evil uh, deeds and uh, acts of not fulfilling the divine will. For instance, the act of Kayin and Enosh, then the Shrina was pushed up, pushed back out of the world into the heavenly spheres from the realm of Aleph to Bet and to Gimel, 
one, two, three level, the levels of division. And afterwards, the generation of the flood, the divine presence was pushed further away, removed from the level, the third level to the fourth. Etc. So the Pusik says, um, the Pusik says, the, the Medrash explains on the Pusuk, and he heard the voice of the Lord God walking around in the garden. Amar of Abba, mehalech and kasiv. Why mithalech? Mithalech is reflexive. Why that grammatical form and not just going in the garden? It doesn't say just going, it says mithalech, right? Lo en kasiv kan mehalech, ela mithalech, kvitz vazil, kvitz vazil, jumping. Jumping up. But and... what means mitalech? What is the difference? You said they, he didn't say this, he did that, but you didn't translate what is this, and you did not translate what is that. Right. For One... me, that I don't understand the brief, you know? You are right. talking to Dvora, but uh, Dvora knows I don't. Right. So reflexive is when you're doing something to yourself. Mithalech. Like self, a self-inflicted action, a self-action with yourself, not just going. Here, let's look at the context. So, um, I wonder, let's just see if it has. Um, one second. Where's my... I did not want to give you more. No, that's because all right. Because normally you are so, uh, you know so well about uh, uh, the language, you teach the language. I right. thought you knew. So, Mitalech Bagan, it's from Bereshis Gimel verse Ket. No, we're, this is how we learn. It's very good. Your questions are very important. Right? So it says, it's Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord God. Mitalech bagan. They heard the voice which, which was moving about in the garden in the direction of the day's end. Leruach hayom. Mitalech bagan, leruach hayom. So they heard the voice moving around in the gun. And they were naked. So they hid themselves. So let's see what Rashi says. Vayishma'u. They heard. What did they hear? They heard the voice of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And Rashi uses the same word. Shehaya mitalech bagan. L'ruach hayom, in the direction of the day's end. The same ruach, um, 
from which from where the direction from which the sun came and that is maravit that is the west maravit that, is a west maravit is Ma west yeah. yeah like the i the thought Kot east Ma no kotel hamaravi is the western wall ah Okay. Mizrach is uh, east. Ah, Mizrach. Right. Mizrach. Because, so it says, because Lifnot Erev, Rashi says, uh, before the evening, uh, the sun is in the west. Okay. So, so it's a question. Mit Halech means kind of like it was going around from the word la lechet. Right? It's reflective, reflexive. Excuse me. Instead of just going, it was going around. Right? It, he translates it here in the Chumash. It was moving about in the garden. The voice. So here, the Medrash is explaining why does it say mitalech? Because it means kfitz va'azil, going and jumping. Okay, ve'acharkach, so it meaning, and that's what's explaining here, that the shechina was being pushed away, right? He's using that as a source for this idea. The stalkus of the Shechina. The Shechina was affected by the behavior of the people in the in the garden in this world. We affected the, the ability for the Shechina to dwell here, kind of pushing it away. So afterwards, Amdu Shiva Tadikim Vahoridu Esa Shechina Lamata. Then there arose seven righteous individuals and they drew down the divine presence below. They brought it back. And who were they? So generally you'll think it's the seven shepherds that we talk about, right? When we, and we compare the seven in the spheros, the seven midos, we, we say Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, Yosef, David. Those are usually the seven, but these are a different seven. It's not the same listing. This listing of seven, seven Sadikim, is the lineage of Moshe. And in this case, the seventh one is Moshe. So the first is Abraham. Abraham, Zachava Horita Sashchina, Mirakia Zion, Livo. So Abraham brought it back down from the seventh level to the sixth. Yitzchak mi vav lehe. Yitzchak from six to five. Ad ki Moshe shu ashvi. V'chol ashvin chavivin horidu horido lemata baritz. Until the final one, Moshe, the seventh. And we know he brings a source that all sevenths precious, special. He brought the Shina down below onto the earth. So I think, is, um, I think Rabbi Yosef Itzak already was projecting what would happen. He was already passing away to our Rebbe because related to seven, you know, right. it's it's uh, for sure, for sure. Like you said, Savat, Savat, Savat. Yes. Savat. Yes. Yeah. And, and the Rebbe told us that we are the Dor Hashvi. We are wow. the generation. We're the seventh generation. We have a role to play. So the seven, by the way, are Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov. Then his son was Levi. And then Levi's son was Kahas. 
And then his son was Amram. And then his son was Moshe. So that's the seven. The Ikar, the Ikar Gilui Elokus Hayabes Amikdash. So the main uh, revelation of godliness. Because we said that the job of the seventh is to bring the Shekhinah down. So the main place where it's to be revealed is in the temple. Okay, could we, um, am, I, am I able to uh, scroll or Devorah has to do it? She's there, she's there, isn't she? Oh, I heard her voice, yeah. Uh, just scrolling. We didn't finish the page. Thank you. Okay. So in the base of Mikdash, Dixiv, Vasuli Mikdash, Vishachanti Besoycham. As it is written in the Torah. And you shall make for me a sanctuary, and I will dwell in them. So here we see that vishachanti is the same word as shechina. I will dwell, meaning the shechina will come down, the indwelling, in them. And again, Chazal say, it doesn't say, Make for me a sanctuary and I will dwell in it. It says, and I will dwell in them. And our sages say, in every Jew. You're gonna, I will dwell in the people through the sanctuary. Here it is. In each and every one, I will dwell. It's Chaval. I don't have a book that actually gives the source for every Pasuk. Some There are books uh, on this mimer that are very well, well um, um, how do you say, uh, explained and elaborated on, but I just have up this plain page. So um, this, this is a pasuk that says, and the righteous will inherit the earth and they will dwell forever on it or the land. So that's the idea of where will the Shekhinah dwell? The Yishkenu, here it's using the same word, like the Shachanti, Shechina v'yishkenu, that the Shechina will come down uh, and through the, the tzaddikim. The tzaddikim yirshu aretz shehu gane eden. So in particular, that the righteous will inherit the earth. This is gan eden, the garden of Eden. Mipnei ma l'fishahem mashkinim hainu mamshichim so how do we, how do the righteous inherit the earth, which is Gan Eden? Because they uh, draw down this aspect of God, God's manifestation called Shochen Ad, that he dwells forever. Marom Vikadosh. The exalted and holy. She begilui lamata. That God doesn't just stay upstairs and stay hidden, but that he becomes revealed here below. Bazel basilagani. And that's what it means that the Friedrich Rebbe wants to tell us and why he's using this quote from Shoshirim I came to my garden. And that my garden is Liganuni to my bridal chamber. I came to marry you and unite with you. 
למקום שהיה עיקרו בתחילה, to the place where his main essence was in the beginning, his main intention and goal was dwelling below. בעיקר שכינה וסחטונים הייסה. That the main indwelling of the divine presence is דווקא in the lower worlds, where you would think, how does God fit in the lower worlds, right? It's foreign to him, it's opposite, it's, it, it denies him, it conceals him. No, that's the, that's the goal. והעניין הוא, and again, Realize how amazing this is that the pre previous Rebbe, he's, these are the main messages he wants us to, to know. So, and that the Rebbe took on to give over to the world. The matter is that the purpose and in, of the intention, the creation and the bringing into existence of the worlds. And this is from, I believe it's from the Medrash um, Yalkut, um, I don't know which Medrash it is. Exactly, like I don't want to misquote. That God, the Holy One, blessed be He, desires, Nisavi, desired, had a tava, Leois, to make for Himself a dwelling in the lower worlds. That the revelation of godliness will be below through the service of man. And here the Rebbe is telling us, hello, <laughs> you are involved here. Through, and here he's presenting these major concepts, again, that he wants us to know and be able to work with this. These are the tools. Through sublimation and transformation. What does that mean? The neshama tered lamata lislabish beguf the nefesh of Bahamas. How the soul neshama? Where did where did we go? Oh, sorry. Okay, skafi b'safcha. Where are we? Sorry, I was trying to uh, make it bigger, make it uh, get to the right place. And oh, and I think it's involved here. Yeah. Hold on. And I don't have my mouse connected. So it's a little... oh, there oh, you are. Sorry, you're not even in a, your own home. It's a miracle you're doing this, Deborah. <laughs> okay, I see it now. Is that okay? Yeah. So the soul is sent down to descend below, to be enclosed in a body and an animal soul. And I think uh, you probably feel it too after a grandchild is born, <laughs> like you're holding this little neshama, you know, that was just sent, you know, and uh, imagining, you know, his, his journey, you know, what it's gonna be and the blessings of the prayers we have for them. The soul descends into being clothed in a body and an animal soul. Right, right away, you need to eat, drink, go to the bathroom, take care of your needs, you know, your focus. So the body and the animal soul conceal the light of the soul. And through this whole process, this will activate and enable the soul to do, to rectify and purify the body and the animal soul. 
וגם חלקו בעולם and its portion in this world, its job. וזהו, ועשו לי מקדש ושכנתי בסויכם. And that's essentially what this command is, that, or this instruction, uh, and, and you shall make for me a sanctuary, and I will dwell within you, within them. Within each and every one. Again, through the service of refining the in, through the aspect of sublimation and transformation. Uka Mimer, like it says in uh, the Zohar, and there's a reference to this at the bottom of the page. Uh, Re'e Tanya, see Ch Tanya chapter 27 talks about this, that kad iskafia sitra achra istalek ikara de kuchabrihu bakulu almin. When you sublimate, iskafia is like kfia, forcing, uh, over, you know, taking control of it. And it might mean Iskafi is, again, pushing away or lessening the, the Sitra Ahra, the other side, the, the forces of evil. Then, um, then it will Istalek, it will be revealed, call God, God will be called and in, in all worlds. Meaning, when God will be Kulu Almin, that'll be with the Geula. So how do we break the Geula? By doing this refinement process. So it says, all worlds. This, this, what's intended here is, is a level where light is in all worlds equally. I know what's that. Or has The encompassing sovev kol almin, that encompasses all worlds. Shemei ir bechol elamos b'shave. And radiates into all worlds equally. I have a, I want you to stop one moment. Okay. To explain what is Iskafia, because I think uh, people who are hearing this, not all of them know what is Iskafia. And so many times you explained it in your class in Malchut, what right. is Iskafia. I think you should give an example. Just an example, you know, so people can follow it uh, in a in an easier way, right? Well, like my husband, you know, he'll he would give like an example of uh, even in eating, right? Chodesh uh, Shvat is the hush, the sense of eating. So there's a lot of opportunities to do a skafia in eating. Um, it might be pushing away the chocolate cake, pushing away the dessert, um, right? Because you realize I don't, you know, yes, if it's Shabbos, I'm eating in, to honor Shabbos. It doesn't mean that I need to eat the sugar or the, you know, the, the food that I know doesn't necessarily have nutritional value. There's nothing essential in it that I haven't gotten in my challah, <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, sometimes that might be an extra portion. Controlling your desire. Um, it might be- Maybe it can be to, uh, to postpone just a little bit, not now, uh, in some minutes, so things like that, okay. Yes. 
So let's just look while we're at it at chapter 27 of Tanya, uh, just to see what he's referring to. So uh, here it's talking about sadness um, and being able to be masir dato, to push away thoughts uh, from things that are sad. Controlling your thoughts. Interesting, interesting. Yes. This I yes. never associated with this Kafka. Uh-huh. Interesting. Right, the Moach Shalita Laleb, self-care. Um, and then it, let's see if it actually quotes this. Um, Sitra Ahra. Yes, Kad. Here it's talking about analogy to material food when there are two types of relishes, one sweet and the other sour. Um, the idea of doing chuva. And here he has the quote, when the sitra ahra, the wicked man shall repent of his evil and turn his evil into day and light above. When the sitra ahra is subdued, subduing something, sublimation, subduing something, and the glory of the Holy One, blessed be he, is brought forth on high. So, um, and then it talks about things that are fully permissible. Not only something that's a sewer, um, like you said, that when a man sacrifices, even only for a while, with the intention of subduing the sitra achra, iskafia sitra achra. So, when he wants to eat, but postpones his meal for an hour or less, and during that time occupies himself in the Torah. It says in the Gemara, the fourth hour is the time when all men eat, but the sixth hour is the time when scholars eat, because they used to starve themselves for two hours with this intention. Although after the meal, also they studied all day. So if he restrains his mouth from uttering words that his heart longs to express concerning mundane matters, likewise with the thoughts of his mind. So there's machshava dibur and maisa, thought, word, and deed. And this, then you're subduing the sitra achra, and then the glory and holiness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu goes forth above to a greater extent. And from this holiness issues a sublime holiness on man below to assist him with a great and powerful aid in serving him who is blessed. So that's chapter 27 of Tanya. We see our quote and uh, definitely Kadai. This is actually the chitas for... Uh, Chapter, which chapter? Chapter 27. 27. 27 of Tanya, yeah. yeah? Yes. But yes. doesn't say which which of the 27. Okay. Which day? <laughs> oh, I just shut the there book. There are okay. many days here. Yeah. Uh, no, it's towards the end of the uh, chapter. Talks okay. About yeah. Okay, so we see... The, the, the Fidik Rebbe is telling us our avoda is in our everyday life. How do we deal with the world? And our role is bringing the Shina down. So, so the Sovev Kol Omin, it's talking about the light that's equal in all worlds, that um, this light, Haino Ora Sovev Kol Omin, Shemeir Bechol Elomos 
Dibeoilamos hare yesh hiluke madregos. In different worlds, there are divisions. They know domeoilamos uyainim loilamos tachtainim. The upper levels of creation, the upper, upper worlds, so to speak, are different from the lower worlds. The Bailamas El Yaini may irha or begilui. Those, the upper worlds, so to speak, in terms of upper and lower, it's, it's not exactly apropos the terms, but it helps us to understand. So the upper worlds are more spiritual. And there, there's more revelation of elokus, of divinity. Whereas in our lower worlds that we see and we're functioning in, uh, in our everyday life, uh, in our in interactions between people uh, in this world, here, you don't see godliness so clearly, unless you look. <laughs> it's not necessarily obvious. Yesha or Bob, Bikinus Helen the Hester. And in fact, there's even this dimension where the light is concealed. It's hidden. The Yesh Bazechiluke Madregas, there's different levels. Koshkosov Af. Yedei Sada Aretz Yemini Tavcha Shamayim. I can just get our source here. One second, just so we shouldn't be sourceless. Um, whoops, what happened? I can share the source. I'll just scroll down, okay? Okay. Hold on a second. I think I, I, yeah. You looked at it? Hold on. Uh, here we go. Yeah, my, my fingers and my, you interview with the. Okay, let's translate it. Um, Right, that even through his founding of the earth and and my the or the founding of the earth, uh, my right hand spread out the heavens. And it it explains this in the Madrish. It says, Natayimino, he raised up his right hand and created the heavens. And he raised up his left hand and created the earth. So that shows you a difference, the heavens and earth. The right hand is always the, the side of chesed, of love, of the flow. And the left hand is more restriction. So the earth was more created from that side of Restriction from the left hand. The adua, the yad yamin, moreal haor vagilu yoter. The right hand reflects the light and revelation that's greater. It says, v'yamino tafcha shamayim, his right hand spread out the heavens. The shamayim akavana ola mos elionim. His right hand spread out and created the upper, more spiritual world. Sham hagilui v'chinas yamin. There, the revelation is in the reflected in the right hand, the right side. Shehu gilui haor, open at light that's revealed. Ve'aor atzmo v'chinas gilui. The light itself is in a way of revelation. The aretz. The land created with the left hand, the lower worlds, the realm of physicality, the lower worlds, 
והם מבחינה שמאל, ואין האור בגילוי כל כך. The left side, so the revelation is not so revealed, the light, וגם האור עצמו בא מבחינת הלם והסתר. And the light that does shine is filtered, concealed, and less obvious. Okay, next page. So again, he's talking here about the Beis Amikdash, the tabernacle, the temple. And the idea is that in Davka, in the lower worlds, in this world where there's concealment, there should be revelation. So this page we don't need. This is already, I just sh showed you this to show the name Shtenosora. Okay. This is already uh, a further page. Now we want page 112. Okay, hold on, let me, let me, uh, hold on, let me get this here. You, out. Is that page 112? Yes. There you go. Okay. You do I have fresh for Dalai Lama is to see Kolonikra Bishmi, Vulikhvedi Rasiv Yitzartiv, Af Asisiv. So here again, the Rebbe is giving us basic ideas in Hasidis. So he's saying, now I'm going to show you that there's differences in worlds. We can start to, to learn about worlds. And we learn about worlds from this pasuk that I believe it's in Isaiah. Again, I don't know all the sources here. Um, so it says, all that's called in my name and in my glory, I created it. I formed it, even I made it. So notice, what do you see there? You see in the words, three names of worlds. So, kolanikra bishmi lichvaydi, that's already talking about atzilus. I created it, I created them. Barasit is like the, the name Bria. Yitzartiv. Yitzira, the same word. I've created it. I formed it. Af Asisiv. I even made it. Like that's that's like the name Asiya. So there's these worlds, the world of Asi Asiya, Yitzira, Ria, Atzilu. Hem Dalid Olamos, Atzilus Bri Yitzira Asiya. Bezeha or eno kamo shehu batzilus. So in the lower worlds, the three lower worlds, bri, tzira, siya, it's not like the light that's in atzilus. Kamo shehu bibiya. Atzilus is higher and more revealed light. Batzilus hu bechinas giluya helem. In atzilus, there is a revelation of the concealed. Yatzilus milashon etzel v'samuch. You see in the word itself, atzilus, the world of emanation, the light is ma'atzil, the light source is emanating. And the word itself, atzil, is like etzlo, or samuch. Like in modern Hebrew, when you asked your child, you know, he went to his friend's house and he comes home and you ask him, where were you? He says, Aiti etzel chaveri, chaver shuli. Right? I was etzel. I was by him. I was at his house. So etzel means next to. Therefore, atzilus means next to God, next to God's essence. Another explanation of the word atzilus is the word hatsala, which is like um, 
I think he means here saving Latzil. The hafrasha is like separating, unless it means shading, like the word tzel means shade. Hi, Shelly, how are you? <laughs> okay, the atzilus. I don't know what that Rosh Tevis is, is Bechinas Olam. Aval Bechlaluso, who Bechlal Olamos, I ain't so. Moshe and Kimbria, she who has Cholos and Metzius, Kimis Yesh Meayan. So he's showing us how Atzilus is separate. And it's even a question whether it's even called a world yet. Because it's almost like just like a part of Hashem. It's like a next to Hashem. But in general, uh, it's it's the worlds of the Enso, God's infin infinity, an, an unlimited infinite light. Mashiach, which is not the case, Bria. Bria is already the beginning of Metzius, of an existence. And it ha you can already call it yesh uh something from nothing. Okay. And see how the Rebbe is giving us basic ideas to build on. Let's go on. So the first part of that verse at the top doesn't have a word for Atzilu specifically. It just says, all that's called in my name and in my glory. So here he explains why. All that's called in my name and in my glory, my name and my glory is what's unique about me and separate about me, God. Atzilus is the word, the world where everything there is united with God's essence and you're included. Because the light there is shining and revealed. The eno do so the light in Atzilus is not at all like the light in the lower three worlds. So Bria, Yitzirasiya. Bria, Yitzirasiya. Atzman, Yesh Chiluke Madrega. So then in those three lower worlds themselves, there are divisions in the Gilui of the lights. Kamashikasuv. Olama Bria, so in Bria and Olama Yitzir Vasia, Amnam calls Zebe or Sheba Lacha Yisus Olamis, Bechinas Memale Kolom. So the differences in the three lower worlds are in the light as it comes to enliven the world, because then you're already talking about creation and Nivraim created beings. And there, he says, it's in a way of filling olds. The light fills the vessels. But the light that's above the worlds, that's called the encompassing light, not filling, encompassing, surrounding. There, the light is surrounding and encompassing the worlds. And that is equal. When it's filling, each plea is different, right? This bottle holds a certain amount. This cup holds a certain amount, right? Every physical thing is unique and has different measurements and ability to Hold the light. Whereas in Soivev, it's everything's equal, it's equally shining. Bazel 
Bekulul almin. So we said, when we do iskafia and restrain the forces of evil, then the Shina will shine in all worlds. I knew. The way that this light will, will be drawn down is in all worlds equally. In order to do that, so the way to do this, to refine the world, is in a way of is through a skafia and is the, the sublimation and the transformation. Rizzo, and that's the quote from we quoted from the Zohar, and we saw it in Tanya chapter 27. Kad when iskafia, when we sublimate the forces of evil, the sitra acha. When we act in our in our service to uh, to sublimate the force of evil and transform darkness to light. Then we will see that the advantage is of the light that Davka comes out of the darkness. I know. Kasher choshech nefach l'or. We transform darkness to light. Hine nasei yisar or. Then we see the special advantage of that light. Shal or meir begilui. That the light shines revealed. Adasher yair lamata mamash. Until it to the extent that it will illuminate below actual. In this place that is by definition, not a vessel for the light, it's contrary to the light. Okay, let's scroll. Behind new, that we draw down the light in a way that it's drawn down in all worlds equally. In other words, just like the light above, the encompassing light is equally revealed. We're going to bring somehow that the aura soved down into this world. That's what this means. We saw in Matanya that when we sublimate the force of evil, the God, Holy One, blessed be He, will rise up and be called and seen and experienced in all worlds. Kinas haor shenim shach or a sovev kolomin baofen ham shach to bechinas sovev umakif bechol ha'elamos b'shave. We said that this encompassing light. What's special about it is that it's drawn down and encompassing all worlds equally. Im kain meir gam lamata that it will then. Also shine below. Moshikos of Lamala, as it says above. Zeo Vesuli Mikdash, Shachanti Besecham. And that's the lesson and the inner meaning of the you shall make for me a sanctuary, and I will dwell amongst them. Betoch Kolecha Vechad, with each and every one of you. Through this service of trans sublimation and transformation of darkness to light. 
in an in you something. Wait, wait. Yeah. You are re rushing. Um, uh, this is Naturally. done. Naturally toilet. <laughs> <laughs> is uh -huh. it done? Uh, I can I consider scafia like sublimation? It's uh, something else. It's not doing scafia will bring this light. It's something like uh, give example. What what makes the light uh, come come in? What is its transformation? Sublimation that you say. Is 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 hapha or is is kafia? No, those are none two, of them. two dimensions of avoda. Or you could, I mean, there, here he's saying that when we do the iskafia, that brings to the isapha, that brings to the transformation. Mm. But there are parts of Hasidus that talk about. Iskafia says more stur meira, and isafcho is aseto. Ah. So in that case, it's ah. like yeah, it's well, true. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's but, interesting. Uh, it's uh, true. Right. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, it says. Um, also in Hasidus, it talks about rots of a show, right? The pursuit to connect God and leave the world, and then the return, show, come back and apply it. So that can also be like a scoff in a self because you're, and, and, and it, like it says, Rabbi Yakiva, Nechnas Shalom, Yatsav Shalom, that we need to know that we need both, that it's not enough just to turn from evil or to, you know, and, and that emphasis of Sur Meira, especially in Hasidus, it says, say as, you know, say Musr, Musr, the teachings of Musr more emphasize that, this pushing away, denying and, uh, uh, the focus on the evil itself, whereas in Hasidus, it's the Yotze, that it's that al, al yedei, al yedei, asetov, you're memela, you know, you're including the sur meira, or that, uh, so, but, but lemaisi, you need both, you need, uh, you know, the pushing away, the Ratso and also the show. And that's where Rabbi Akiva represented this balance that he went in to the pardes, into the orchard of spirituality, in order to come out. Yatsav Shalom. He, he understood this need to uh, the inspiration and the application. So thank you. Okay. So finish this paragraph. Vehine naseli al yadeze yisarana or through this service of refinement. These are ways of refinement. Birur and zikuk, right? Zikuk of refining and purification. Then we are expressing this idea of light, the advantage of light coming out of the darkness through this, in this world that's seemingly dark and void of godliness, that we dive could bring the light here through the goof, through the animal soul. And we see that that's the Yisaron Ha'or, the advantage of the light, the, this, the higher light that comes davka out of the darkness. That the Oro Sovev is Oro Mashiach. That that final revelation of God of, of Mashiach. So then we'll experience this, this encompassing light here together revealed in, the, in this place of darkness. So Kitsu. Here's the Rebbe's uh, summary. 
Ikar Shrina Besachtainim. The main goal is that the Shrina Divine Presence should be here in this physical world. Yivayer de Kavanas Briya Soilama Shia Dira Besachtainim. Explains that the intention of the creation of all the worlds is that Davka, there should be a dwelling place, the Shekhinah here in the lower worlds. But Naselia Day, how? Through Eskafia Lisapho, sublimating and transforming. And when, when we do that, then we Shemam Shikh or Asovev. Then the aura sovev that until that happens is just, it can't come down, it can't fit, it can't be limited by the world. It just surrounds physicality, it just surrounds it and it's equal. Again, it's the light that ultimately will come be drawn down and and fills all worlds equally. So it's not gonna be, oh, you're only, only gonna experience God, you know, at certain times or places or certain efforts. He'll be experienced, he'll be, uh, he'll fill the world and everyone will uh, experience and connect totally equally. Okay, so we certainly should take a break now. The question is, do you want to continue or just suffice with this taste of, of the mimer Basi Lagani? Okay, so my I have an appointment in five minutes. Okay. <laughs> you guys want to continue learning. Um, I can I can hold on, let's 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 pause. Our details about uh, the mimer continues to talk more. The, he, he explains what the Mishkan is and the parts of the Mishkan. And of course, the famous uh, ex, uh, concept that the Krashim, for instance, the Krashim, the word for Keresh, is the boards in which the, uh, the tabernacle was built, was called Keresh. Kufre Shin and Kufre uh, Shin, Keresh. And if you turn around the letters, it spells Sheker. Sheker, which means falseness. And it was made of Atse Shitim, this, this acacia mm. wood. And the Shitim is Miloshin Shtus which means the folly of this world. And a person only sins when Ruach Shtus, when the spirit of folly enters him. So he shows in such a beautiful way how uh, this world is building the tabernacle, all the things of this world, taking the, the, the Shtus, the silliness and the, and the folly and the falseness of the world and using it in our divine service. So wow. we should... Inspired Beautiful. by uh, the Rebbe's my mom and uh, we should see Mashiach now, Mamash. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Yudshvat in 1970 is called Yudshvat Agadol when the Rebbe uh, con completed something the Friedrich Rebbe began, which was the Sefer Torah of Mashiach. So we see also that you could read about it that this is a day connected to the idea of Gola, Mashiach and Gola. So we should merit Amen. to see, take it from Yad Mamash. Amen. Thank you for the beautiful class. Okay, my pleasure.